Knowing that you are righteous in Christ gives you the confident assurance to let go of your worries to the Lord. Perhaps you are struggling to do that today. You think that you have to get right with God before you can receive His help in your area of need. Maybe you think you are not righteous enough and have no right to ask God for wisdom, healing and provision. But my friend, it's not about your righteousness. God wants us to be established in His righteousness. In a time where daily living involves carrying a load of demands, responsibilities and concerns, we need to learn how not to be consumed by fears and stress. Do you know that supernatural rest is available for all of God's children? Do you believe that we can really live above worry, stress and anxiety today? My friend, not only is this your Heavenly Father's desire for you, His Word also shows you how this can be your reality. God loves you. He knows how your body and your mind are meant to function. And He knows how carrying worries and fears over prolonged periods of time results in harm to your body and your emotional well-being. It affects the quality of your relationships and ultimately the quality of your life. This is why He invites you to live the let-go life, a life of trusting in Him, casting your cares on Him, and seeing Him take care of all your needs. If you are tired of being in the grip of worry and anxiety, the Lord wants you to hear how much He loves you today and how you can start living the let-go life and let Him supply your needs. Some years ago, God gave me a vision to help us understand how His supply works in our lives. He showed me soft golden pipes bringing His supply to every area of our lives. He showed me how His supply is constantly flowing towards us. And just as the supply can be reduced to a trickle when the pipes are squeezed, our worry is like an invisible hand that clocks up God's supply towards us. The problem is not that God is not supplying, it's that we are not receiving because the supply is cut off by our very worrying. So what happens when we let go? You got it. God's supply and grace is released again. His supply can flow unhindered. Isn't that so encouraging? We don't have to do all sorts of things to get that supply to come to us. We just have to let go of our worries, trusting He's taking care of us. We just have to say, Lord, I cannot, but you can. I refuse to worry about this. The Lord revealed this powerful revelation to me one day. He said, Son, my grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. Did you get that? Grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. He asked me to look at my life and showed me that I was still struggling in the areas that I was worried about. But in areas I wasn't worried about, His supply was flowing. That really made me sit up. I don't know about you, but I want to see His supply of grace in every area of my life. I don't want my worrying to hinder any area. Now, it's because of our Lord Jesus' finished work on the cross that grace is flowing for our health, for the soundness of our minds, and for our intimacy with the Lord. Grace is flowing for us to walk holy, to have revelation of His Word, to have wisdom to parent our children for every area of our lives. And as long as you let not your heart be troubled, His grace flows unhindered to you in every area. Let me give you an example. I remember how as a teenager, I was never worried about money. It's not that I came from a well-off family. Like many people, we had our challenges. But for some reason, I just believed that God would take care of me. Once, I found out my brother needed some money. So I looked in my wallet and saw that I had $10 left. That was all the money I had in my wallet. But I took it and I put it in his wallet. As far as I know, he never found out. But you know what? Before the day was over, when I needed a meal, someone gave me a treat. Somehow the money came in. How? Up to today, I still don't know. But when I saw that, I began to realize, hey, my Heavenly Father will take care of me financially. So I've never been worried about money from then on. And in this and other areas I'm not worried about, I've experienced His supply. And then Jessica came, my precious daughter. When she was born, oh boy, she was so beautiful, so adorable. I couldn't take my eyes off her. 
As a result, every little sneeze or cough from her will get me sitting upright and wondering, is she all right? Too cold, too hot? When she started eating solid foods, whoa, it brought on a whole new set of concerns. To be honest, I didn't think that I was worried about her at that time. I mean, come on, I was God's lean, mean preaching machine, so how could I be worried, right? But in reality, I was hiding a heart full of cares over Jessica's health. And the more I was worried, the more she fell sick. She would recover from a viral attack only to get another attack a short while later. My worrying had me pushing myself and Wendy to do everything right, and yet there she was, falling sick. I couldn't understand what was happening. Perhaps you can relate to this as well. A recent poll of 2,000 parents found that 90% felt stress and pressure about raising children. Another poll showed that some of the things parents are most stressed about include the fear that their child won't have the opportunities he or she needs. The fear of their child being hurt or endangered by others. The fear of sickness, accidents or injuries happening to their child. The fear of their child being bullied. The fear of their child going through extreme body image issues. If you are worried about any of these things, I'm about to share with you God's way out. Do you remember how I was so worried about my daughter's health and how she kept falling sick? Finally, one day I prayed, Lord, I really don't understand. Jessica is eating the healthiest foods. We are protecting her, keeping things around her clean, doing all the right things, and yet she keeps falling sick. Help, Lord! The Lord replied, Son, each time you worry over Jessica's health, you actually endanger her. You are putting a big button over her for the devil to push. The devil sees that he can push this button and it would affect your preaching for that Sunday. He can push this button and your relationship with Wendy is affected. He can push this button and you're no longer the same Joseph Prince. Your very worrying over Jessica is hindering my supply of health to her. I asked the Lord, so what do I do? And the Lord said to me, cast your daughter into my hands and I'll take care of her. I love her more than you can. And the best thing that you can do for her is to be carefree. Don't worry about her anymore. You know, I wish I could say that this revelation helped me to immediately stop worrying about Jessica. The truth is, it took me a while. But once I started letting go of my worries about her, Jessica got healthier, stronger, and didn't fall sick as much. The less I worried about her, the more I saw God's blessings over her life. I believe that as you get a revelation of how much He cares about you, you can let go of your worries into His big and powerful hands, and you'll begin to see victory in those areas. In my new book, I share a lot more about the Lord's immense love for us, because when you know His love, it truly sets you free to live the let-go life. You might be thinking, but Pastor Prince, I just can't help but worry. It has become such a big part of my life. If so, then I believe that what I'm about to share with you will really bless you. Let's look at Matthew 6, 25, because our Lord Jesus is teaching us something very powerful here. He says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Did you notice that our Lord Jesus said the words, do not worry three times? It's clear He wants to bring home the point. Now. Think of some of the needs you are worried about. Do you believe that your Heavenly Father already knows you need those things? He knows you have practical needs like food, drink, and clothing. And He tells you that all these things shall be added to you, not just given to you, which could mean just the bare minimum, but 
added, which speaks of giving on top of. In other words, all these things shall be added to you in greater quantity or quality. Isn't that so much like our Lord Jesus? Ephesians 3.20 says, the way He gives is like this, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. The Lord is generous towards you, my friend. He doesn't just care for your basic concerns. He wants you to enjoy a quality life that comes with an untroubled heart. He wants you to have a quality body that is not riddled with sickness, disease, and weakness. But He also tells us what is of first importance before all these things can be added to us. And what is that? Let's look at Matthew 6.33. It says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now, what does this mean? Pay close attention now because I'm about to give you a powerful key to begin living the let-go life. Some people claim that seeking God's kingdom is going out into the mission fields and serving Him full-time. Now, we know how important missions are, and we believe we are blessed to be a blessing. But this isn't what the Lord was saying. To understand what He meant, we have to first define what the kingdom of God is. In Romans 14, 17, it says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Did you get that? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you want to not worry and see the things you desire added to you, your first priority every day is to seek His righteousness. His righteousness, not your own righteousness. When you focus on His righteousness, the Bible tells us that all these things, whether it is food, clothing, or other things in life, will be added to you. Not just given to you, but added to you as your inheritance in Christ. You don't need to use your faith for every single need in life. You just need to use it for one thing, to believe that as a child of God, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. When you get hold of this in your heart and seek to grow in this truth, that is seeking first His righteousness. And that is how you'll begin to see all these things added to you. God's Word promises that when we choose to let go of our worries to Him, all the things we desire will be added to us. That's the beauty of living the let go life, which I share about in much more depth in my new book. Just before the break, we saw how God's Word doesn't leave us alone to figure out how to do that. It actually gives us the key to seeing our lives blessed with all things added to us, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now, some of you might be thinking, what is God's righteousness? And why must I prioritize it? I've been encouraging you to let go of your worries to the Lord thus far. But the thing is, Unless you are first established in the truth that you are righteous because of Jesus' finished work, you won't be able to let go and let His supply flow into your life. Knowing that you are righteous in Christ gives you the confident assurance to let go of your worries to the Lord. Perhaps you are struggling to do that today. You think that you have to get right with God before you can receive His help in your area of need. Maybe you think you are not righteous enough and have no right to ask God for wisdom, healing, and provision. But my friend, it's not about your righteousness. God wants us to be established in His righteousness. Many people believe that they have to get righteous by doing right. They think they have to become perfect in all of their actions before they can let go of their worries and believe God for healing, provision, and more. But the Lord is telling us to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, His righteousness. And all these things will then be added to you. You see, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive the gift of righteousness. I want you to see what Romans 5.17 says for yourself. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Do you see how we didn't become righteous by doing good, but we receive righteousness as a gift? My friend, 
I can't emphasize how important this is because like it or not, we will fail. We will fall short. And if we are not established in our righteousness in Christ, the devil will accuse us and make us think that we are not qualified to receive his supply. Nothing could be further from the truth. At the cross, the divine exchange took place. As our Lord Jesus became sin with our sin, we became righteous with Him as our righteousness. Isn't that just beautiful? The Bible declares, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. At the cross, our Lord Jesus became sin by receiving our sin, so that we can become righteous by receiving His righteousness. When He became sin, He was cursed. By the same token, when we became righteous, we are blessed. And just as He was cursed, not because He deserved it, we are blessed, not because we deserve it. Hallelujah! What's more, the Word of God tells us that when you receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, you will reign in life. To reign in life means you live free from stress. It means you have victory over every sin and addiction. Because when you reign in life, your sins and addiction don't. It means you can break free from the bondage of the enemy and walk in greater measures of victory and holiness. Hallelujah! You can live the let-go life and trust God for good things, not because your life is perfect, but because His righteousness is in your life. Now you might be wondering, but Pastor Prince, I've done so many bad things in my life. How can a holy God make me ungodly, righteous? That's a really good question. Let me explain. At the cross, God, who is holy, took all of your sins and my sins and laid it on Jesus. His holiness unleashed His holy wrath against all of our sins in the body of His Son. And because all our sins have been punished in Jesus' body at the cross, God now sees us righteous based on what Christ has done when we believed. The Word says, But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Notice that, believing in a God who justifies the ungodly. When God looks at us today, He sees the loveliness and perfection of His beloved Son. Hallelujah! I pray that from this day forward, you'll be so established in the Lord's righteousness that it'll become easier for you to let go of stress and receive every blessing promised to the righteous because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Your Savior has paid the price. At work, you don't have to depend on your own smarts or endless toiling to do well. Psalms 5 declares that the Lord surrounds you, the righteous, with favor like a shield. You can let go of all your worries to the Lord because when you cast your burdens upon Him, He will sustain you. You might be asking, how do I know that I'm established in righteousness? Isaiah 54 gives us the answer. It says, In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. So how do you know that you are established in righteousness? When you are far from oppression because you are not fearful, and when you are far from terror because it will not come near you. Now, what is oppression? It's Old Testament language for the word stress today. When you are established in God's righteousness, you'll be far from stress because you won't be fearful. I submit to you that if you are constantly struggling with stress and fear, then you are still depending on your own righteousness. If that is you, can I encourage you to keep listening to the gospel of grace until the truth that you are the righteousness of God in Christ is cemented in your heart. When you know you are the righteousness of God in Christ, instead of letting your fears eat away at your heart, you'll be able to let go of your worries to the Lord. Can I share with you what happened to a precious believer when she became established in righteousness? Here is her story. Pastor Prince, my family and I have been listening to your messages on God's grace. They have given us the freedom to rest in the liberty that Jesus paid for with His life. Before coming across your messages, I had been a Christian for many years, but wondered if I had done enough to please God. However, your messages opened my eyes of understanding. I learned it was not about what I must do, but what Jesus has already done on the cross. 
I have shared the gospel with others, like my niece and sister. My sister is now trusting God without fear of condemnation, and my niece began to share the gospel with her friends. God has blessed our family beyond our wildest imagination. We recently bought a car, debt-free, and God put a desire in our hearts to bless a family in church with our previous car. Indeed, as God has been gracious to us, He enables us to be gracious to others. Wow! I'm so happy for Kelly and her family. What I love is how Kelly simply believes that she and her family are righteous by faith in Jesus' finished work and began to walk in the blessings of that righteousness. May you also become so established in Jesus' righteousness and His finished work that you experience His abundant blessings flowing towards you. As His Word promises, all this thing the world seeks shall be added to you. The world is running ragged after health and wealth, but our Lord is saying, don't stress yourself out pursuing these things. I know you need them, but pursue my righteousness, and all these things the world seeks will pursue you. Amen? So every morning when you wake up or any time during the day, declare over yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for taking upon yourself the punishment of all my sins upon the cross. And thank you that you've made me your righteousness. I also encourage you to listen to sermons and meditate on verses that establish you in His righteousness like those mentioned in this episode. Get a hold of my book and meditate on what having the gift of righteousness means for you. The more you are conscious of how you have His righteousness as a gift, the more it will give you the confidence to let go of your worries to the Lord and start living the let-go life. Thanks for watching and see you next time.